Hello, hello and welcome to the last week of the group stage for the League of Lads here. We are here with Albert and the Puppets versus Nebula. Breaking it down here, this best of two will be the fantastic and unique and the later, one guys. and later, only Fusquash. How are you doing, my friend? Hi. So, we're seeing here Nebula versus Albert and the Puppets. What, uh, so we, we don't, haven't seen a tiny band, which I think is the biggest, like, thing that jumps out to me here. Why is tiny not banned and not first picked? That is a good point. I don't know what, uh, Pango Kanka bands are. Uh, are they target bands towards their yeah, team? clankers. I see. There is some target bands here, um, and they're gonna go with a first pick Magnus. I've heard there's now also like something like a support Whoa. Magnus again. Yeah, yeah, support Magnus is uh, kind of coming back. Mm. Personally, I don't like it that much, but I think people are doing it. Oracle Sven is not a combo that I would really expect hmm. to first phase, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. It, I can't tell if they picked the Oracle in, like, reaction to the Magnus or something. Maybe for the ult against the RP and stuff. Oh, yeah. So you can get rid of that long stun. Um, I mean, the Sven pick is mostly, like, you have this last pick in the first phase and you can protect it with uh, three bands, so they're going for the Sven. Yeah, right. I'm I'm fine with the Sven pick. I think uh, Sven is probably the best carry in the game right now, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Oracle first phase, I think, is kind of sus. I don't think this hero is that strong in order to first phase when there were other heroes left in the pool, like Tiny, for instance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, still Tiny, not banned or picked. Like, I, f I feel like yeah. if, if Radiant gets Tiny after the second ban phase, um, I feel like they, could, they would be quite happy with that. Um, now, they banned out the Invoker. Huh. And the Earth Spirit. And now they ban out the Morphling. Are, are there any specific heroes that are, that you feel like Morphling counters super well? Like that they ban it out like that? Uh, I don't know why they would ban Morphling when they already have a Sven in the first place, right? Yeah. Mid Morph and carry Sven so they actually got the tiny on the second phase that's super surprising <laughs> yeah we have a tiny here being picked up right in the middle of the draft uh, how do you counter tiny let's uh, let's talk about that uh, it's a very strong hero um, I think you can counter tiny with either um, like drafting heroes that, don't, that can't die to his burst obviously mm-hmm uh, but they already have Witch Doctor, so that's not happening. But if you're playing a Witch Doctor, you can itemize Bracers and Glimmer and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Tiny won't be able to burst you. From support Tiny, your burst is lower than mid Tiny. So like a mid Tiny can burst a Witch Doctor with Glimmer, probably. Depending on what items the Tiny has, but a support Tiny won't be able to. Yeah. And uh, with that, um, what... So, I feel like Nebula, they they need to find a little bit of an answer to the Tiny and the Sven at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> I know Colonel Squid has been playing a lot of Arc Warden, but already Sven and Tiny, very good yeah, heroes. Yeah, Sven together. destroys Arc Warden. Yeah. They're going to go for an Axe. Huh. That means Magnus is not a... <laughs> Three, so it's either one, two, or four. Four Magnus is really weird. I don't think I like it at all. I think it's better as a five if you're gonna put it as a support. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they'll do a four Witch Doctor either. So yeah, they... I'm going to assume for now that it's core. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, they, there's gonna be this Sven Oracle lane against Axe. 
How how should that lane fare? The Sven should be relatively okay, I think. Yeah, I think Axe beats a lot of carries, but Sven isn't really one of them. Since it's heroes. A strength here, obviously. He's mm -hmm. really tanky in lane. And he can he has a stun to prevent the axe from running at him. Mm -hmm. Oracle can purge off the battle hunger, which oh. makes this pick even worse, mm -hmm. since battle hunger is really potent harass to one lane. I think that Nebula needs a four that does a lot this game. Because right mm -hmm. now they don't have um, any sort of playmaking if Axe doesn't have a game. Mm -hmm. And I think that Axe most likely won't have a game. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing is uh, you can Calling Blade people who are Oracle ulted if they are low enough when they get ulted. So oh, they that... may have picked it for that reason, but I'm still worried about the lanes. That go through the, the Oracle ult? Yeah, if they're below the threshold, it just deletes them through the alt. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, very similar to Shallow Grave, of course. Um, so they're using a lot of reserve time for their fourth pick. We're most likely going to see the offlaner here and then reserve the, the last pick for mid, which is uh, what we usually see, as well as it keeps the flex with the... I see Tiny, they're gonna go for a Snapfire. Um, if they play that as three, I think it's epic. This is one of, in my opinion, one of the stronger threes of the patch. Snapfire is three? Yeah, and it's actually one of the stronger mids this patch, I think. Uh, I know our team has been running Snapfire two and three a lot. Mm -hmm. Gonna go for a life stealer, which of course uh, very nice against the Mortimer's kisses, but still, Snapfire can be very potent as a core, uh, especially that early axe is gonna provide a very long range initiation. It's actually pretty hard to catch a life stealer off guard with a uh, like a cookie throw. You can definitely see it coming in rage, and it's also a good matchup for Sven. So I like this carry pick a lot. Mm -hmm. If Wish Doctor is the 5, then I think it's possible to bully a core Snapfire, even in lane, uh, if they're out of position. Mm -hmm. um, and they have the Magnus and Power, so... Oh, yeah. Lifesteal will be able to contest Sven in terms of net worth, I think. Uh, they banned Slardar, so they actually think it's a mid-snap. Or a mid-tiny. One thing I'm a little bit worried about for the Dyer, they have currently three heroes that most likely are core with the Magnus that are strength. Maybe Albert and the Puppets could pick something like a last pick Timbersaw to counter that. Witch Doctor is okay versus Timber. Oh, and there, Zeus is really Zeus, good. Yeah, Zeus is very, yeah. very good against Timber. Because <laughs> they are going to address a possibility. That's a like... scary pick, though. If like Sven and Tiny have the potential to get on Zeus mm -hmm. really easily. And if this is Snapfire Core, she will have, uh, I think, an axe right. relatively fast. So yeah. Tiny doesn't even need a, a blink dagger of his own. It's just gonna and the build on Core Snap it. is usually brown boots into wand into axe. So you get it around like 15 to 20 minutes every game. Uh -huh. So the Zeus pick, and now for the Raiden, they're gonna, Ooh. they're gonna uh, go for the timber saw, and it is actually a four um, Magnus. It looks like, yeah, with the Zeus mid, yeah. Colonel Squid is the mid player. Um, hmm. What do so you think, think of these drafts? Um, I think that Radiant has picked this timber. Um, because even though like Zeus's damage output is really good, they have so many ways to get on the Zeus that I think they are okay with still picking the Timber because obviously Timber is amazing against the rest of these heroes, mm -hmm. uh, besides Wish Doctor. So maybe Wish Doctor will screw over Timber if he gets some nice Maledicts. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's favored in these drafts, actually. They both have like very like potent strengths but they also have like these flaws that 
And I think both drafts have them, so it's not. I don't actually think any draft is one-sided here. Mm -hmm. And I think the players are probably equally skilled, right? In this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it's uh, rather equal as far as I can see. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, I personally, I like the timber pickup not only because I also predicted it, but <laughs> I like it. Uh, so, uh, as uh, most people know, you can put in your own prediction in chat with exclamation mark bad radiant or exclamation mark bad dire, and it tracks how often you got your prediction right. Currently, Brightside is at the top of the prediction leaderboard. And we are here, game number one, and guess what, guys? Already a pause. Because you predicted Radiant will win? Yes. Alright, then I'm gonna go with Dire. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody just wants to go for the other side. Huh, so, it, it will actually be the Snapfire mid against... The Zeus. <laughs> how's how's that lane gonna go? Oh, Padded is the mid. Yeah. Uh. I I think they both just free farm, right? I'd assume they both just free farm. Yeah. Magnus isn't gonna gank though, but Tiny could gank and throw Zeus into towers. So, depending on Tiny rotations, rotations, uh, Snap could win. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this tiny set, the the, the Christmas one? I think it's pretty epic. <laughs> I love it. I think it's really cool. He doesn't have the full Christmas set. He only has the first piece. Oh. And then the other three pieces are from the uh, from a different. Set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he has the, the 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 Christmas tree all all the way. Um. So the weapon is always going to be the tree. I like the, the Christmassy tree. Just a little pause here. You can look over some cosmetics. Oracle doesn't have the new immortal one. Oh, it actually does. No. It oh, it doesn't show the particles while in pause. That explains it. Okay. <laughs> um, because the particles, I think, make it that set look really, really cool. Uh, what else do we have? We have timber saw. Oh, we have we have a go. We have a go. We're gonna go in this game one in this best of two between Albert and the puppets on the radiant side versus Nebula on the dire for the radiant side. It is Garda on the position for tiny. We have clankers on the timber saw going mid. Will be pattern. On the Snapfire, on the little Mortimer, such a cute little hero. And in the safe lane will be Nephilim on the Oracle. And last but not least, Ultra Gunner, the beast himself, on the Sven. Who do we have on the Dire, Fusquash? Opposing them in the off lane, we got Jax attack with the three axe with his support Magnus friend, Silver Pike. We have Colonel Squid, Zeus Mid. Followed by a Bulljax, five Witch Doctor, and Fume Life Stealer one. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said in the draft, like we feel like especially the Life Stealer pick can do quite a bit in this game. It's a quite a good matchup against the Sven. Um, I also think it's not a bad matchup against Snapfire. Uh, the one he has to worry about a little bit is this Timber Saw, of course. Uh, now let's see here. Is there going to be any any little conflict about the bounty runes? Who's going to get the free money that spawns in the river? Clanker is going with level 1 reactive armor. Just going to tank those. Oh, and Fume will have the fast fingers. And down bottom it will be Ultra Gunner. The safe lane players just showing their prowess with clicking buttons. Congrats. I think this top lane is going to be our lane to watch. Uh -huh. There could be a, either a lot of kills here or no kills here, depending on how these players decide to play. Mm -hmm. uh, I, at level 1, probably nothing's going to happen, but once Witch Doctor gets level 2 with the Maledict, I think some mm. stuff's going to go down. Interestingly, Clankers goes with the E first on Timber against, a, against this lane, and I think that is actually a pretty big 
disadvantage that he's starting with. Mm -hmm. If you have Q or W on Timber, you can harass his life steal a lot. Whereas this reactive armor isn't gonna stop life stealer from just clicking you and healing. Yeah. So maybe he was afraid of the witch doctor um, actually like killing him or something at level one. But I don't think it's actually good to go E on Timber level one almost ever. Mm -hmm. Also feels like like you don't really do much. Garda, one more, two more mm -hmm. hits. He got the creep with Bulljax right on his tail. Unfortunately for him, he's now too low health to contest, which means Timber has to come all the way back here, and that's yeah. worse for Radiant than it is for Dire. So usually when you make this um, pull on Tiny, the point is for your ca your uh, offlaner to 1v1 contest the enemy safe laner, and you get free XP versus... Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Fab gonna be. What? He cancelled his TP. Oh no. What? Oh no. He could have got out. I feel like he would have got out. He, yeah, I feel like the TP would have been enough, but fortunately. Miss like I guess. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, you're just like, I'm just done with life. It's like the, the Oracle factor when you hit that uh, silver tier on Oracle, you just need to spam, I want to die. Uh, yeah. And so that's the first blood for the Radiant already. You predicted that this top lane is the lane to watch. Um, most likely not ha the way you, you expected it to go. Um, True. But they, it's still... Kronos could actually running back to base on mid laner because he went for a null tally, I think. And uh, maybe some region items, mm -hmm. which means he doesn't have his bottle about right about now. <coughs> And he's going for the second null too. That's rough. I think you need bottle early in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Oh, Clankers is going to go under tower here. He's going to take some tower shots. There's the Maledict now. And now the open wounds. Clankers has the timber chain away. But, uh, like, I, I feel like that's something that Clankers needs to be very scared of. That Maledict can do quite a punch against that timber so Garda smoking already mm -hmm. uh, they down, know that the Zeus TP back mid down bottom they got Jack's attack with very nice combo there by Oracle just being very aggressive with his purifying flames and purifies that axe Garda is now behind the trees there they have to the slow there's the avalanche there's the toss do they have the damage the cookie it oh, misses nice, nice sidestep is it gonna be enough Colonel Squid, he has a fairy fire, and with that pattern, he has overextended. <gasps> Find oh, the kill! No. Oh, but oh no! Pattern goes down first, so at least he didn't get the experience, but that was a very greedy play by Colonel Squid to stay around that close. <laughs> very close call there from both sides. Um, the runes, the runes. Both supports not on a rune. Bulljax is gonna hasten it up. And go back top. For this bot lane, it seems like Magnus um, is kind of a non-factor. They can just ignore him, right? And Sven mm -hmm. can kind of freeform versus Axe. That yeah. being said, Axe does have the same amount of CS. So I guess they'll both come out of this lane with decent farm. And I think, uh, like, the question is, like, how... Oh, they're trying to go onto Jack Sega. No, just throwing out the stun, telling him uh, who's the dominance and in, in who has the dominance in that relationship bottom there. Um, oops, a little second here. Um, when we're talking about this Axe and Sven, like if both of them come out, like even in terms of farm, do you think that favors more the Radiant or that favors more the Dire? If the Axe and Sven come out even in farm, I would say it favors Dire because that means that. I axe with at least like early game. If he has the same amount of net worth as Sven, he's just a stronger hero than Sven. Mm -hmm. Sven needs more items in order to be effective. So if they can, they can like put up um, or push the tempo, I guess, with this axe. I don't know if he's gonna go first item blink because I feel like it doesn't actually do that much this game. Mm -hmm. So maybe he'll go like um, a vanguard or hood or something like that first before the blink but if he makes a rotation to this mid tower at some point i think 
that would cause the timber conversely to rotate and how would that go? Svan and Lystu would probably be free farming. I guess nothing actually happens mid. <laughs> it's it's hard for um, either of these teams to do anything with their offlaner if they make a mid rotation because the um, the mid laners for both teams are not tower push heroes. Mm -hmm. So if Axe or Timber rotates the mid lane, it's still hard to get the mid tower because the enemy offlaner will just rotate and now you're in a stalemate. So I think if the teams recognize that, they would make a move on the enemy safe lane tower before the mid lane tower. Gotcha. That Which makes means sense. after that, they could try invading the jungle and see if they could stop the enemy carries from farming. But it seems like both teams, um, just looking at the drafts and like how the lanes are going, it seems like they're going to have the exact same game plan going into mid game. Their off laners are a tanky front liner, their carries farming with cleave, and their mid laner is a magic damage hero. <laughs> it seems like the same sort of thing. Yeah. If you break it down like that, it does seem like a very, very similar um, uh, lineup. I think the the big thing is going to be what can Silver Pike on this position for Magnus do? Um, because as you mentioned, like so far the Axe has not really been getting much help from the Magnus, but he's still keeping up in CS. So I feel like if Silver Pike is able to um, translate that like not being in lane into stacks or or just farm for himself um that could be something that is advantageous for the dire both supports in this game have to find some space in order to get their own blink daggers right mm -hmm. so i think that tiny will be able to get his faster than magnus because you're not like farming with cleave yourself whereas tiny can just avalanche toss a creep wave and get out yeah so i'm going to assume that tiny will have the blink faster than magnus in which case radiant can play at a faster pace so i'd be worried about that if i were dire because i i don't see how this magnus will have impact outside of just empowering his life stealer and if that's enough to win them the game then, then they should go for it but I don't know if it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of bounty runes, we see three bounty runes for the Radiant and only one for the Dire. Jack's attack, he is now just cutting creep waves and uh, living the happy life that way. Silver Pike just contesting uh, Ultra Gunner, or more Ultra Gunner is contesting Silver Pike. They're trying to make it go. No, Nephilim is just uh, harassing. Up top, they're trying to go onto Fume. Fume's holding the rage. And now, oh, he's going very low. He's still holding that rage. Yeah, rage doesn't do anything against Timber. They're pure skills. So but rage it, wouldn't stop it. It would have stopped the tiny movement damage. speed. It would give him the move speed. That's true. Maybe he would have got out. Now, Bulljax, yeah. he's going to be uh, tossed at and some more whirling death here. And Clankers, he rolls that death right at the Lifestealer and the Witch Doctor. And uh, so two kills now for the Radiant up top. Very good. Fume now level 5 to Clanker's level 6. They can put some serious pressure in this, uh, in this lane now. Mm -hmm. They just dive him over and over again. Garda is hiding behind the one tree that still exists on <laughs> top. <laughs> oh, there is the Rage now. He's turning it around Garda's onto just... Garda. There's oh, going to be a TP okay. in. He gets the tower switch. Oh, the toss. Garda is not going to survive, and now with the Maledict, can they take on Clankers? Clank is just going to turn around, he says, what you going to do about it? There's an Infest Bomb, Ooh. not going to be enough. He's out of mana on the Timber. Oh, he just disappeared. That was his, that was Thunder God's yeah. Wrath. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very strong from... I did not. Yeah, that's like very good for a Zeus. You just got the kill on probably the highest net worth hero in the. Yeah, Ultra it Gunner. is the highest net worth hero, so. Yeah. Ultra Gunner has now got strength and just uh, finishes off the Magnus. Um, interested to see Zeus going triple null talisman. Is that back? Triple null? Um, I don't know for sure, but I think Thompson does a similar thing. Hmm. But no bottle Zeus is very weird. I don't like it at all. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Radiant, they just leave the, the timber saw up top as long as the lifestealer is there and Clanks is just pressuring into the tower. They're well, smoked on the supports on Radiant, so they're going to try to make a play on Zeus if he shows mid. Mm -hmm. They, they got do the have Mortimer Kisses. Snap out, yep. Oh, Colonel's good. <laughs> you know, timber is zoning this lifestealer out of lane. This tower is probably going to go down in the next few minutes mm -hmm. if Dyer does not make a rotation up there. Oh, Colonel Squid is gonna be fortunes ended here. There's gonna be the avalanche. There's the cookie. They don't even need Mortimer's kisses. A shotgun blast to the face will do the trick to take out the almighty Zeus. Who's mighty now? The grandma says. I make cookies. You make lightning bolts. Cookies win. Clearly. So... We see kind of, uh, like, I feel like we see a lot more rotations from the Radiant right now than from the Dire. Um, Jack's attack and Silver Pike are still both bottom. Axe is level 7. Um, oh, they bring in Zeus here, trying to go onto Clankers, but he's just gonna get away. And Silver Pike pushing in this bottom tower. Radiant's positioning right now is really bad for their farm distribution they had five heroes top for a good 30 seconds or something now mm -hmm. timber comes bot which means they're gonna lose the pressure that they had on this offlane tower yeah um, um, but um... of course they're gonna defend their own tower but i don't know if i like this play because i think timber is stronger than axes right now so they can f they should have forced the top tower in my opinion and zoned the lifestealer out mm -hmm. and also like with a 2000 net worth lead for the radiant um like i I, like the, the, the timber saw versus lifestealer, as long as just lifestealer was there, timber saw was fine. And then when other heroes are arriving, you just bring your other heroes. Garda is gonna have the. This. Uh, yeah, see, now this you find a reason, of... Rune, you don't have a bottle. This is so sad. They are gonna try to go on to the lifestealer. Bulljax is gonna try to TP out. Do they have any stun? Oh! Was so. Garda cool. actually walked away because I think he thought he couldn't get the kill, but if he sat there and right clicked, yeah. lifestealer might have died. But maybe, I guess Sven will take this top tower and Timber will defend bot. Mm -hmm. So, this actually works out in Radiant's favor pretty well. Axe has a first item blade mail, and I'm not sure what that does. But I am eager to find out. Mm -hmm. It no. seems like, because I, I don't think that blade mail enables you to run at enemies mm -hmm. like a vanguard or hood. Clankers is gonna get run at by three heroes, but the rotations are coming in. They're overextending they really hard. Are, on yeah, this Zeus is very far forward. Nephilim immediately is gonna be is gonna be uh, maledicted up. Now the Mortimer kisses over the top. Colonel Squid is gonna fall, and with that you've lost your Zeus. Jack's attack looking. Whoa! He stopped the animation for the calling Did he blade. get fogged? Maybe. I think Seems so. Really weird. <laughs> And the uh, clank is Crystal just chasing. running forward, get the gets Duke. the Jax attack. Now it's going to be surrounded by three heroes. They have Maledict up again and Clanker is a little bit too far forward. No Timber Chain will save you there. Nice movement by few. Oh, huge Ancient stack here. Ooh. I don't even know if they're going to be able to get this. <laughs> that is uh, very scary. Oh, Silver Pike, a Silver Pike? <laughs> oh my god. Fume. <laughs> oh, I mean... Can they? Can, it's gonna take quite a while. I mean, it's it's a lot of gold, but and experience. Yeah. <laughs> He's taking so much. Oh, he has armlet now, so yeah. he should be fine. And they're now open wounds, and that is a mighty stack for the life stealer, who is one thousand gold behind the Sven. I think that is like one of the big thing. Like Sven during that bottom Absolute engagement power. was just farming. Sven is way more farmed than Lifesteal. You are right in that. He's been farming this whole time. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going with a call onto the timber saw. Do they have the damage? The There's a blade skewer. Mill. And there is a three man avalanche plus a toss, finishing off Axe and the Magnus. They will lose Tiny for that, but more That's than big happy for tiny, to trade though. that. Yeah. Got him a lot of gold towards his blink. That was an interesting skewer away from the Magnus. I think he may have been predicting the timber chain and tried to cancel it or something, but mm -hmm. it ended up going, working against their favor. 
Now it looks like they still want to force the bot tower. There's, but there's Radiant, still timber saw here with a hood. That's gonna be a difficult to get. Lifestyle is gonna hit the tower. They're gonna go straight onto the Zeus. There's a death Zeus is out of position again. And with the, is there going to be enough damage? There's going to be the face edict coming in from the Oracle. They find Fume with the toss, but Fume is just going to turn it around, trying to hit Garda. Anchor is doing a lot of damage here. I think he's just dead. Yeah, there's a Calling Blade from Jack's attack, and now the Infest on the Halbear Smasher. They get the call onto oh. the Sven, and Ultra Gunner is going to fall. Fume now dominating, and uh, looking at this Tiny, has the open wounds, and with that... Rockman is gonna fall. Sudden Fumes almost close to the Sven's net worth. He was, he was like 2.5k below just a minute mm -hmm. ago. Now he's only 300 below. So last few fights have been amazing for the Life Stealers game. Yeah. Zeus is playing extremely out of position, I think. And if Radiant were better at recognizing it and punishing them, he should be dead a lot. Mm -hmm. So. I think Squid has to play safer. Yeah. Like think about his positioning more, because he, if he dies in the fights, they lose so much damage output, and I don't think they'll be able to win it. I also think like the difference of this bottom fight and the previous bottom fight was like instead of having Sven farming, you had Snapfire farming and Sven participating, and I think that right, just that's doesn't bode as yeah. well. Um, now pattern he is very close to having his Agonims. Um, they are trying to go on to Nephilim. Nephilim is gonna survive. But they are gonna get this tier 1 tower. Jack's attack with the last hit. The fume is very far forward. Fume, they have no to rage. stun. Uh, they, have -up. they don't have any follow up. They find the witch doctor. Huh. Very disjointed fight from both sides. Yeah, I think some of the members on Radiant went on witch doctor instead of going on the life stealer without rage. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could have gotten that kill. If they hadn't split their damage. Silver Pike just is stealing away the bounty runes from the Radiant. Snapfire 100 gold away from the Agnum Scepter, which I think like that Agnum Scepter is gonna make life so much easier for the Radiant. Like just in terms of like finding that initiation. They're gonna get this tier 1 tower. Oh, Bulljax is gonna be caught by the tiny. There's gonna be the toss and whoo! Scatterblast not even needed, but Pattern still does it. Tiny's now 300 for Blink, and Mag is still much more than that. I can't do math. It's 900. <laughs> They're trying to go on to Ultra Gunner. Ultra Gunner getting very low here. That's going to RP, but the false oh. promise from Nephilim. And with that, Silver Pike is going to fall. That's going to be the cookie stun. And Fume is trying to kill a full. <gasps> They get the call, reveal. but the. Calling blade. Okay, they still get the kill on to the Sven. Real. Toss in position. Okay, still works though. They still huh. get the kill on to the life stealer and the axe, but they lose the Sven. Some questionable use of spells there, from both teams, I would say. Mm -hmm. They RP'd and life stealer had no interest in popping out, but at the same time, Oracle ulted, so they wouldn't have got the kill anyways. But the Oracle ult was too early to purge off the RP. Yeah. And then Axe came in. Says, I'm going to trade my life for the Sven life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably worth for the Axe. But that whole fight in general was not worth for Dire. Yeah, I agree. I would say. Now, Bulljax, he is on a warding vision. Is not going to get popped by the witch, uh, by the Timberstone. Yeah, speaking of warning, Dyer's vision right now is way better than uh, Radiance if you look. Mm -hmm. They have one defensive ward in their triangle. They have this ward over here, which I don't think actually is doing that much for them right now. But Dyer has great vision off the Radiant jungle, so yeah. they're going to look to play here and control this area, mm -hmm. I would assume. Zeus is going straight Ags in this game. That is so scary. He... Can get caught so easily. I feel like he needs this blink yeah. before the axe. But this is extremely greedy. This I, may. Uh... Oh, they find the they find the life stealer here. They still have gobble up the three thousand range initiation. If they want to go. Life stealer halberd finished. This is gonna make Sven kind of suffer. Mm -hmm. This life stealer, he's keeping up with the Sven. Um, 
Yeah, it's those early fights accelerating him, plus mm -hmm. the, uh, plus the Empower now. Now, Snapfire has the Agnim set there. What do we usually see after the Agnims? I think they're waiting for Tiny Blink before they do anything. Now the Tiny has Blink, I would assume that they're going to make a play. Um, or I hope they will, at least. Because mm -hmm. I feel like they should recognize, at least, that Dire is not playing um, as 5 right now. There's yeah. so many heroes split. Okay, like they're, they're gonna just oh, toss wow. Tiny right on top of the Zeus and with that. Yeah. Squid may be regretting his choice for the Ags right now. Oh. <laughs> Jax almost solo killing Ultra Gunner top. Oh. Yeah, Ultra Gunner, he's gonna try to turn it around. Oh my god. Pops the God Strength. Jax is gonna, gonna blink out, cancel the blink. Oh. oh. Nice. The jukes. nice jukes. Very nice jukes, and he's gonna TP away. Somehow, this movement from Radiant has caused the Witch Doctor to play some defensive vision over here and here. And I actually don't like that because I don't think Dyer should be playing in this area right now. Uh -huh. It's kind of one or two wards wasted. Uh, they still are going for the tier 2 here, the Glyph forced out. God Strength is now over. Meanwhile, Dyer, they're pressuring the tier 2 tower as well. Neither team really wanting to give up this stalemate that we have right now. But it is a 3000 net worth lead for the Radiant, which is mostly from the Zeus not really having a good game so far. I think they're just going to be trading towers, looks like. Neither team will get the outpost at 20 though, so <laughs> yeah. this is... It's okay. I don't like trading towers if uh, if you're gonna miss the outpost, but since it's too late anyways, trading is probably fine. Mm -hmm. Timbersaw now has the pipe finished, and there's a smoke from the Radiant. We have Gobble up again, we have the Mortimus Kisses. That is just an illusion. Look into smoke right now. And they're gonna, they're gonna get the call onto the Tiny here. Tiny is gonna be gobbled up, however, and just spit out. But they have two heroes in very bad position. Snapfire already dead. Clankers is gonna be maledicted up. Is it gonna be enough damage? Does not look like it. Ooh, 70 HP. See, obviously it's a hard decision to make in the middle of the moment. But a Snapfire there, when you see your Tiny initiated on, I don't think you should have any... Um... Uh, you don't, you shouldn't think to run at the tiny who got initiated in order to save him. Instead, you should try to toss a uh, creep in or something mm -hmm. and just kill the axe with the magic damage you have. Yeah. It's, if you yourself get out of position in order to save a tiny, it's just not worth it. Mm -hmm. The risk is too high for the reward. Letting your tiny die is okay. Now they're just gonna get Roche off this. They are Seems. trying to contest. Ultra Gun is here. God Strength. Oops, Ooh. axe. That was a red man defeated by a red man and. Tiny finds the Magnus into the back lines, and they have now Aegis on this Sven. Dire, they're just trying to get out. Bulljax cannot get out. Oh no. Sven Dyer just walked just... in. Oh, um, he finds the Magnus on the back also. Oh. This Magnus just got the blink, it seems like, but had... I don't think he used it in that fight. RP still up, and Sven ult is going to be down. Oh, the Timber gonna... gets chucked in. One thing that Snapfire acts is it's just so much fun. It's a super fun. That is fun true. Um. And uh, so now, like, I feel like Dire, they they need to. What do they need to do? Like, I'm I'm kind of at a loss. Oh, Fumi is going for Nephilim. He's trying to just solo Neph here. Is. Oh, this is gonna... He's gonna get killed for this. Yeah, he is gonna be called out. He doesn't have rage for five more seconds, and... Fume, that Dyer's coming in just to... They get the call onto the Sven, but Sven has an Aegis, and now the Mortimus Kiss is over the top. Finishing off this Witch Doctor Jax attack. It's gonna get the trees and kisses tossed at him, but he Squid will survive. Being chased. And Colonel Squid, he's gonna go for the TP. <gasps> the cookie stun just in time. And again, Cookie's proving to be stronger than Lightning. But oh, they get the Aegis on Sven. 
I don't know how they got that actually. Wait, they got the ages? Yeah, he just like died in the back. I don't even know what he died to. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's not that bad then. Zeus needs to respawn though. Without him, this high ground defense is not happening. And Sven all already back up, so they're just gonna get a free racks. It looks like. Yeah, that was a fight without the god strength, and they're just looking to take a set of racks here. Bulljax, ooh, the call, not gonna hit. The purifying flames, however, who will. Now the open wounds are gonna be disabled. There's gonna be a BKB oh, no. use. There's gonna be a gobble up straight onto the witch doctor. Witch doctor is gonna fall. Silver pike is gonna fall. That's a dieback on this witch doctor. And with the ooh, Jax attack oh. jumps in, doesn't get the call off, and one more purifying flames is not quite enough. He will survive. Clankers, oh, it's gonna fall, but they will lose I mean, the axe. Somehow axis. this blink into no call and <laughs> seven timber dying. Dyer is playing so disconnected. Now, Zeus is gonna be caught out front again. He is gonna fall. And Ultra Gunner, he doesn't need God's strength. He has God's willpower. And with apparently will is enough right now. They have Dyer's Magnus. They're not respecting Radiant. Like, they just walk out of their base assuming that Radiant's just gonna back. But how do you know that? They have all their spells up. Mm -hmm. And there's no blink Zeus again. They have no the skewer under the tier fours buyback from the axe Axe's here. Buyback is a bit too late. They're just gonna blink out. And uh, with that, that is now I think three buybacks. Yeah, three oh, buybacks. Axe didn't chase. He just went on the creep wave. Could have got the oracle kill. Three buybacks for the for the radiant. It's not looking good. Yeah, and uh, now with an 11,000 net worth lead, suddenly the Sven 3,000 ahead of this Lifestealer. Axe and Zeus struggling very much. This ward is destroying them. At least for that fight, it did so much. It was, I don't think uh, Squid knows about it. But mm -hmm. we'll see. He'll have his Axe, so we'll see what he can do with that. And mm -hmm. my guess is probably not that much. So I think... Radiant has hit their power spike and they've hit it strong. Oh, Jack's attack, careful. Sven is in the neighborhood and so is this grandmother. They Jack. don't see each other though. Oh yeah, night vision. They are looking at fume. Gardar gets the jump. That's gonna be a rage oh, force now. What? He's away. <laughs> oh no. They are gonna go onto fume and Colonel Squid. The rest of the team is approaching, but you've already oh, lost nice your life stealer. And they get the Zeus as well. Boljax is gonna fall. That's three heroes without buyback. And they're just right back mid. That's now gonna be one set of racks at least, if not two. They have God Strength still for 20 seconds. Yeah, they're gonna go straight top. Wanting more than just one set of racks here for the Radiant and the uh, Albert and the Puppets. The Puppers really proving their bite here. Uh, so so what, what's the way back for Dyer? I think Dyer has to hit some crazy RP into like Zeus and Lifesteal and shit. Like, they, they just need to have some insane team fight, right? And most of that just comes from if Radiant chokes or not. Mm -hmm. If Radiant doesn't like get out of position and throw this next fight, then I don't think there's any way the Dire comes back into this game. They have the Ags on Zeus now, but what's it gonna do? Yeah, even like and Tiny this just... still has hundred percent vision on them. Yeah. Oh they fight They find the lifestealer here. Flankers is gonna get gone on with the open wounds. That's what not going to connect them, but with the with the Nimbus, there's gonna be a false promise forced out. Don't think it's gonna be enough 4200 gold for one lightning bolt. <laughs> so I don't, it's a very expensive lightning bolt. Yeah, I feel like this. I uh, hopefully Squid recognizes that should have gone blink. I'm really adamant about not rushing eggs on Zeus. I think it's. Almost bad in like every situation. Mm -hmm. 
Especially if you go up against uh, these tiny who are going to have a Blink Dagger Snapfire who's going to have Gobble Up. Um, right. Like, it's so easy for Radiant to get on top of you. And now, Radiant, they're just going to take the tier 1 bottom, looking for the tier 2 next. Also, Snap E destroys Nimbus. Oh, yeah. They, they need to hit that Dream RP. The Dream needs to come alive for the Dire. They oh, going they for the smoke. smoke around. Oh, can they hit Deuce it? will not be part of this, though, it looks like. Dire doesn't want to continue high ground, and that's going to make Radiant pay. Uh-oh. Fume finds the Oracle. Oracle has a Glimmer Cape. They have vision thanks to the Nimbus. Oh, Huge miscommunication. And Lifesteal, he has been caught out. He is just gonna fall here and he is dead. Jax attack finds a call, but a call onto Sven just means that he's gonna rip you apart. Silverpike finds a courier, but that is just not gonna do it. I don't know why game. Dyer actually decided to like, or I mean Radiant actually decided to like back this way after getting the tower instead of just going high ground. I have no clue. I guess they thought they couldn't go high ground into Dire or something, but that play of them just going back into the triangle makes that entire smoke useless. Mm -hmm. uh, GG is called. And GG is called. And with that, this first game going the way of the Radiant, Albert and the Puppets taking game number one. So you're, 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 in, you're the coach for Nebula. What are you telling your team? Like, I'm the coach for Nebula. Mm -hmm. Your team is like oh, no. all distraught. They're like, how could we lose this? We had the perfect draft. It's all uh, our I'm fault. We're all terrible players. We should all be in Herald <laughs> bracket. Uh, I think um, from those few first few like bottom fights where Life Studio like accelerated super hard and he took over the Sven at one point, like that that showed that um, Dire has potential, right? It, mm -hmm. I think the If they, if they think about what their goal is in the draft better, then I think they're likely going to have a better time. Because it, this Magnus doesn't fit into their game plan at all. Mm -hmm. And it's something that they decided to first pick, so they placed a lot of value in it. But I think it was the worst pick in this dire draft. Gotcha. And that's not to say, like, Silver Pike is bad at it or anything because I don't think there's anything you can actually do as a Magnus this game as a four Magnus specifically it's like he doesn't have a role in this game so it just makes it super hard for Dyer to play and on top of that they had this point in which they lose like one fight at the um, Roshan raiding against the Aegis and the Dyer just like choke from them they seem to have like I, I used the word disconnect earlier and I don't think there's actually a better word because mm -hmm. it seems like each of the players on Dyer were just playing on their own, like especially Fume, he was just running in solo um, to kill like the Oracle sometimes, and he would just get killed for that because he may have been expecting like true sight from the Zeus, but Zeus didn't use it on time or something. There's a lot of just miscommunication, and um, I think they're un they're unable to identify what they need to do in order to come back in a situation like that. So they each try to do their own thing, and that's not the way you want to do it. Yeah. They need to work together to come up with a way to come back. So harness the power of OG. Work on your team together and you will flourish. We will see if Nebula can make it happen in Game 2. Stay tuned.
Hello and welcome back to the League of Lads Season 5 here, Game 2 between Nebula versus Albert and the Puppets. Albert and the Puppets looking good, looking slick in game number one. But now it's time for game number two and we will see can Nebula bring it back and tie this series in a, this best of two or will Albert and the Puppets take it home all the way. With me here to break it down, it is the person who got team coaching from BSJ. It is Foo Squash. Hello. Is that what defines me as a player now? <laughs> I, I'm that guy who got coached by BSJ. Epic. <laughs> So you now have to uh, say uh, uh, promo code BSJ a for promo game. Promo code BSJ. <laughs> so in terms of bands here, um, the exact same bands, I believe, as the first game. Uh, and Nebula uh, are going to have first pick again. When you... Uh, what do you call it? When, I, when you lose, <laughs> you don't usually stick with the same bands. Mm-hmm. Unless you're confident that there wasn't a problem with like the first um, opener of your draft, and I think there was a problem with the opener of their draft, they're gonna take the clock. Again. It seems like they either don't play tiny or they don't respect the tiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I feel like that was a big issue in this draft. There, the difference in how much impact the four positions had just based off their heroes was massive, and Nebula not banning the tiny or doing anything about it, I think, is a uh, an issue. But uh, I don't know if Radiant's going to play the same hero twice, because that's boring. Yeah, yeah that is pretty boring, uh, coming from a person who has a level 25 master tier Rubik, right? Uh, <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now here, Albert and the puppets, they're dipping into reserve time. I mean, isn't Tiny pretty good against Clockwork? They're gonna uh, go for the Oracle again. I think it's pretty even. They both have things that they can do against each other. Like, say Tiny jumps, um... Tiny jumps the enemy team's backline, then Clock just counter jumps Tiny's team's backline. They can do things like that. Um, I guess you could, like, blink into Cogs and toss people out or something, but... Mm -hmm. That's probably rarely gonna happen. You could even use Rocket Flare to cancel the Tiny blink, so... It's pretty even. They have, they both have tools that they can do things against each other with. I don't know why they place so much value on this Oracle hero. So I feel like they're I'm sure Oracle had game impact that game, but it's also because Dyer just drafted Axe into it, and he didn't do anything in lane. Now they pick Batrider into Oracle. I, I don't just know what ask, is happening. Isn't this usual the other way around? Some team picks Batrider, and then the other team picks Oracle to counter the Batrider. Now, if this is the three bad, this game's just over already. What? <laughs> Stop. Same heroes. Now, one thing is, I know Colonel Squid really likes his bad rider. This could be a mid bad rider. I mean, still though, <laughs> you just Oracle ult the lasso target. What do you do? Uh, cry. Yeah, this is so bad. I don't know what's happening <laughs> like, am, am i missing something that's the question mm -hmm. Ten so radiant they have the exact same opener nebula can have they figured it out can they figure out the answers to those two picks well last game i think the only counter they picked to these to this uh opener was the life stealer mm -hmm. axe doesn't do anything against it um and zeus obviously gets destroyed by it i think so Hopefully the next three heroes, at least two of them, hopefully three of them will, will deal with these Oracle Sven heroes. And that's not an easy thing easy thing to do, I guess, since they're, I mean, Sven is strong for a reason. It's because there aren't a lot of heroes that deal with him. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to let Radiant have these same heroes that you just got rolled by, you need to have something in mind in order to deal with it. They do ban out the Tiny this time, so there will be no Tiny for Garda. Yeah, that is good. Hmm, 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 hmm. So, 
Clockwork Bat Rider. I... Like, I, I'm not gonna call it 100%, but I believe it's like 70% that's most likely it's gonna be Colonel Squid on the Bat Rider. Um, which, like, them for Radiant, they most likely gonna pick their four next. Alright, I wanna see a Bulljax Bat Rider. I think they need to put it on five, because they just picked it into an Oracle. Like, yeah, that's if, fair, they, if they have it as a core, I feel like it's already negated as a hero. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds remain. Hey, maybe they don't think uh, Oracle is as hard of a counter to Bat Rider as I think. From if they have the idea to put it mid lane, they're probably like, uh, it's fine since he doesn't purge off Napalm in lane or whatever. So maybe they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. I don't play this hero, so. Ten. I can't say for sure that I know all the intricacies about it. Five Absolutely. Um, so now here we see the Timbersaw ban actually coming out from the Radiant side. Uh, so they are unable to go for the Timbersaw themselves again. But if we, if we want a position 4 here, there is like Rubik still available. Um, what other position 4s? Uh, could we see that Radiant take up? Um, oh. It's not a bad option. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wind Ranger is pretty good right now as a 4, I think. It's in a good place. Uh, you, you can flex it with mid. Uh, I don't like... I'm not a fan of 3 Wind Ranger, but that is also a possibility. Um, how would uh, Wind Ranger versus Batrider fare in the mid lane? Um... I would imagine if they're, like, I guess they're they're both as good on the hero as the other guy is good on their hero, if that makes if that makes sense. But like, if that is true, then it's probably bad favor to an extent. Mm -hmm. I think if like the Wind Rangers, the Wind Ranger expert, there are w ways to play it smile. <laughs> It's still really hard, though. I would imagine it's pretty bad favored. Yeah, they go for an Elder Titan. Ooh. That's most likely going to be Elder Titan. Ten seconds remain. I mean, that hero is an answer to Agi heroes, not strength heroes. Yeah. Sven has a lot of plus armor, not base armor. So it's not negated by the natural order. And on top of that, wind as a core destroys ET. Because you're not going to buy an MKB until after you're like Echo Saber and Ags or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, assuming this is core ET. But I guess it could just be 5 ET, in which case I don't really know why they picked it. Because it doesn't do anything here so far. I think. Yeah. I mean, it could be as like... No, like, why would they go Morphling? Or Terror Blade. Like, I feel like Elder Titan, like, it is he's really good against these high AG carries, like, uh, Morphling, Terror Blade. Um, go for a Bloodseeker. Oh, that's the Team Secret lane, the Bloodseeker Wind Ranger. Yeah. And, um. It's a ridiculously strong lane, also. There's not many heroes in Dota that can play it. There's not any heroes in Dota that can, that can play it, to be fair. Um. Ten seconds remain. Huh. Nate, what do you go if you're dire? Also, you need a hero, you need a good carry matchup, but your carry is getting griefed by this offline. Uh -huh. I also feel like it makes Bat Rider's game even harder, which uh, like the more we look at it, it seems to be a Bat Rider core, but like it, yeah. se it seems very countered, very very countered. True. Hmm. So Nebula What's going to be an answer for them? Uh, is... Anti -mage. They go for an anti-mage. Uh... Huh. Anti-mage and Sven isn't... Not... Actually, okay, so I thought that AM was bad against Sven. 
but then I recently um, we played it in RD2. Obviously, it doesn't really mean anything because it's RD2. <laughs> but for <laughs> what it's worth, call out uh, there from set, from Fusquish. <laughs> for what it's worth, the AM just outfarmed Sven and then was able to just solo kill him. Mm -hmm. But I figured that Sven has stronger mid game and he can just group with his team. So I don't know. I guess it's a we'll call it 50-50 for that reason. Mm -hmm. They can both do things against each other. I'm a little bit scared for Nebula because already in game one it seemed like they had that mid game timing and they hit that mid game timing hard. Like they, they won off of it. Um, yeah, that's true. And uh, playing, so saying, hey, we can just like survive that timing and get into a later stage of the game, I feel like is like it's scary if you just lost against that. Right. Hmm. I'm considering the lane, uh, top lane. I think anti mage is a interesting way to think about this lane. If you can reflect the shackle, which you can do pretty accurately, right? It's a. It's obvious that it's coming. Mm -hmm. um, that means you won't get blood righted. So you can actually survive this lane on AM and. Depending on who they choose as their five, because there are three heroes here that can all go past five <laughs> yeah. for Dire. So depending on who they choose, um, they need to pick a hero, or select a, one of these heroes, to be able to make sure that Anti-Mage just doesn't get harassed. Um, not through spells, but just through right clicks. Because even if they're not using Blood Right Shackle, Power Shot, whatever, uh, Bloodseeker is just going to out right click um, the Anti-Mage. And he's just gonna out CS him with the Wind Ranger also clicking him. So, whichever the hero they put here, they need to be able to protect the anti mage in that regard. But it also means that whichever two they choose for their off lane is just gonna get screwed by Sven. It seems like Sven again just has a free lane. Yeah. And now, so this last pick here for Nebula, they are gonna go for a silencer. Okay. Now they have uh, Radiant four have potential the heroes. Four potential heroes that could be position five. Radiant has won the draft. Smile. But it is four versus five right now. Fusquash, you can't yeah. say it like that. And they've already won the draft, so <laughs> what do we do now? Ray, you can actually pick any hero in the game, and I think I would favor their draft. Putch? Yes. I, I actually <laughs> think Putch would be fine here. Uh, it took a little pass, but... So they have 15 seconds. Um, what are they going to go for here? Your hero. Make the ultimate choice. They're going for a Nyx Assassin. So it's Wind Ranger what? mid. What? Huh. Huh. This is actually... My first instinct says what, but now that I use my brain cells a bit, I think this is actually pretty smart from Radiant. Because it means that Wind Ranger, as soon as we talked about the reflecting shackle in lane, mm -hmm. if you just put it mid, it's a good matchup versus... Oh wait, it's Bat mid, not Silencer. Yeah, it's Bat Rider mid. Oh, I thought it was Silencer mid. Okay. So... I guess, it, well, this depends on how Pattern plays it. I think it's possible for Wind to win the lane, but... Um, Wait, this is an off-lane silence? Yeah, it's an off-lane I don't really know what's happening. Off-lane silencer... does not threaten these heroes. Especially since Oracle can off the Q or mm -hmm. the E from whoever he uses it on. Uh, yeah, interesting. And ET, if he if Oracle skills the W, he just W's the ET, and ET can't harass. Or oh, he just dispel the Astral Spirit buff as well. Oh shit! <laughs> you're, you're right. Oracle's okay, really uh, good against ET. Um, I love ET. Yeah, so I don't know about the Star Draft. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna so, go with Radiant. So we're gonna go with Radiant here. This is game number two. 
between Albert and the puppets versus Nebula. Both here we think, eh, Radiant seem to be a bit better here. But as usual, you can put in your own prediction in chat. You can put in exclamation mark bet Radiant if you think, like me and Foo Squash, that it's Radiant. If you think, no, 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 Colonel Squid and his team, they've outsmarted Radiant. You, could, you put in exclamation mark bet Dire. And I don't want to say you cry at the end of this game, but you're most likely going to cry at the end of this game. Uh, yeah. So, let's go over the lineup really quick on the Radiant side. We have Garda on the position for Nyx Assassin. We have Clankers on the Bloodseeker. Nephilim on the Oracle. Going mid will be Pattern on the new Arcana Windrange. And last but not least, Ultra Gunner again on the Rogue Knight Sven. Who do we have on the Dire? We have a Jax Attacks Epic 3 Silencer. I do think it's epic, but I think it's also sad in this game since there's not much he can do. Uh, Silver Pike on the 4 ET, again playing some sort of similar hero to the Magnus. Uh, top lane, blinking forward, we have a few pause on AM, doesn't manage to get the rune. Bulljax, Clockwork 5, and mid lane Squid Batrider. They found the anti mage here. He doesn't have blink up for one second. It's gonna get rooted. This might be first blood. The blink away. He has a stick. Thank you. Uh, hmm. Impale not quite in range. He started stick in this lane. That's very I interesting. I think he has. Wait, no. Like, did he? Th no, he has the bad rider on his own side. Never mind. I thought like, yeah. oh, maybe he's gonna go up against bad rider. No, no, that's not gonna happen. Stick uh, isn't bad in this lane, it just means that he has less stats to start with. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it would have been better if he... Um, if he called in the stick later and started with more stats. Garda gonna go for the... For the creep cutting shenanigans again. It's gonna get quite a bit of damage here. <laughs> but anti-mage is also a, a rather sad boy. Garda again, like, it's not gonna really gonna be able to farm that creep wave. With how low he is. Now Clankers is coming. He says, buddy, I'll we'll share the load. We'll share the burden. Oh, actually, they, they lost the range creep. The yeah, range that creep. was pretty cool from Bulljax. That was a smart idea. Would have been epic if he actually got the whole wave. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's really a oh, cool way Garda to deal with this. still gets the last hit with a very nice impale there. So mid is going to be Wind Ranger versus Bat Rider. Oh, and he cancels the salve with a beautiful power shot there. What a pattern from pattern. Colonel Squid. It's going to take a lot of damage here. Pattern needs to man up right now. He has a wand. He, if he yeah. kill, he, the play is to just kill this range creep, get his level 3, shackle the Bat Rider, and kill him. Oh. Yeah, that's a free kill. Oh no, he skilled it. Level 2 power shot. Sometimes you just Rip. want to have a big damage nuke. And uh, so far, this Bloodseeker, he is, he's absolutely wreaking havoc against Fume. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, this, um, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think this lane is going to get any better. Mm -hmm. I think showing this lane up top here might be against the terms of service because it is quite a genocide up here. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's not looking good for the anti-mage down bottom. The silencer actually is getting more than the Sven. Um, Silverpike doing a good job harassing the Oracle and the Sven so far. And in mid, uh, currently... A wash between Bat Rider and the Wind Ranger. Fume blinks in. Uh, let's see, guess all his mana burned from the cogs. Can't use the Blood Rider anymore. Okay, somehow Jax has more CS than Ultra Gunner. Uh, I don't really know how. Mm -hmm. He has a double Wraith Band Silencer, what the heck? That's a chat build. That is a chat build, that is actually insane. Um, and ET contesting the pull here, now together with the Silencer they get those last... I feel like 
You can't do this though. <laughs> Don't you need the int to be useful on silencer? I'm gonna hit faster. And armor. So the, gl the glaives is based on your int, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you steal the int as well. So if you hit faster, you steal more int. Wow, this is too five head for me. <laughs> They are gonna go on Nephilim, they get the sleep, do they have the damage? There's now the stun onto Jack's attack, and Jack's attack, he attack, he protect, but he has to retreat. They get the kill onto the Oracle, oh, actually, Ultra and Gunner. now Ultra Gunner, he's losing a lot of int. The the Wraith Band's nearly making it happen there. Pattern kills Squid, solo mid. Oh. Pattern. Well played. Oh, Fume. Fume blinking forward. He doesn't have blink for eight more seconds. Garda is out of Pattern's mana. coming in, but he went the wrong way. Thought there is Fume a blood blink. ride. Fume is going to be hit and the power shot. Clankris is running very fast. He's not going to go for it. He's going to go for Bulljax instead. Um, five minute runes. It's going to be a two for two split. Oh, Colonel Squid. He just came up to Pattern. That's going to be a focus fire. And that's a lot of arrows in your back, Colonel Squid. It's gonna avoid the power shot, and with that, it's going to survive. So now, I mean, I think like the the, the saving grace currently for Dire is that this silencer is having a good time. Um, how, what? We believe in this Nebula draft. They can make it happen. What do they need to make it happen? Um. Well, the way to stop Radiant from having their big mid-game spike mm -hmm. is to play for the mid-game yourself in a way that obviously Anti-Mage can't help in that regard. But they need to make the movements themselves and not let Radiant control the pace of the game. And that's actually... that. Normally, it wouldn't be that hard, I think, with Dire's heroes, but since their cores are Batrider and Silencer, if they had one of these heroes, that would be fine. But both mm -hmm. of them means that they have no tower push. Yeah. Garda doesn't get the impale on the silencer. Oh, Jack's attack is going to get very low here. Another purifying flames. Is it going to be enough damage with the right click? The power shot is going to turn the silencer into a little flower. Pattern just going to kill steel there. And now they're going on to Silver Pike. Silver Pike stepping forward and another purifying flame. They are not respecting the damage output from this oracle. They played this lane last game. I feel like they should. Respect him more. This question mark. What the heck? You die. You question mark. That's that's <laughs> the way. He got tipped, so he goes <laughs> Now Garda with the smoke towards mid. Colonel Squid is stepping a little bit forward here. Oh, the smoke broke. The smoke broke. Retreat, retreat. And Colonel Squid is not gonna fall. They bring in the Oracle as well, but Oracle is very low. There is going to be the shackle shot with the focus fire. It's just solo kill, just running down. Win run! What the heck? There's going to be the... the they missed the power shot! Hello? And, and now the lasso onto Garda, under the tower. They find the oh, kill onto the Nyx tipped. assassin. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like Pattern just didn't win run and... Squid ran away from that. This is a slow. So. Mm -hmm. He could have just ran at the bat. And uh, instead, the bat rider getting a kill uh, is rushing straight boots of travels. Yeah, that's the, that's the usual mm -hmm. build from mid lane. Got um, sometimes there's some like drums, jewels, shenanigans, but mostly it's just boots of travel. Mm hmm. Clankers is going to be surrounded by two heroes here. Bulljax. Not going to go for him. Fume has level 6 now. Has the ring of health. So I think like the good thing about this anti-mage lane. Like anti-mage didn't die. Um, which is like usually what we kind of see against Bloodseeker lanes. Because Bloodseeker just has so much sustain. 
at some point you're gonna die. And to be honest with the ring of health is sustaining you. Mm -hmm. Just as well as the Bloodseeker. It's interesting that they um, left these heroes to 1v1 on um, from Radiant's perspective because I think it's allowing AM to get more out of this lane than he should be. But I'm guessing they think it's fine because if Bloodseeker gets his farm, then they can pull up mid game and just clown on Dire. There's an Invis Nephilim's rune. Being found. Yeah, there's an Invis rune on Colonel Squid. It's gonna get hold there. And now with the sleep, Colonel Squid, they're just gonna take this Oracle. He was not able to foresee that outcome. That is permanent agility. They have the infinite scaling. If this game goes long enough, Jack's attack can one-shot the enemy. <laughs> that is a true statement. <laughs> it has to go very long, but at some point he can. Um, hmm. Pattern not really pushing pressure onto this mid tier one while Colonel Squid is bottom. They're now trying to go on to Bull Jacks. Oh, what the heck! And uh, and uh, the, my player who had the BSJ uh, game lead co the game leap code um, is is a little bit frustrated here with not shackling. Not everybody has the BSJ coaching. Okay, it's hard to get. It's hard to get. Uh, so they they are defending this tier one tower, and they at the same time were able to take this tier one bottom. And Sven has just resorting to jungling. So this this silencer is pretty much free farming. It's going for drums. And I, I feel like the four heroes from Dire, like that mid-game timing, like you mentioned, that we need to see, uh, like, uh, a fight against. Like, if they have the Silencer ready and the Bat Rider, they're going top now here. Silver Pike has been found. The Stomp is going to connect onto the Wind Ranger. But there is going to be the immediate false promise. But the Cogs keeping pattern in the, in the Cogs. And she's gonna take a lot of damage. She's gonna fall. That is a very big kill onto the Wind Ranger. Can they find any more? Clankers, they find the kill onto the Bat Rider here, but Clankers is now in the midst of things. Is there gonna be enough damage? Yes, with the Glyphs of Wisdom Jack's attack. He has now eight stolen intelligence. And Dire, they're ready to fight. Huh. Ultra gonna get free mid tower off of that. That's pretty crazy oh. they do get the kill onto the wind ranger and the blood seat uh -huh. well i mean obviously i'm biased since i'm wind ranger fan gay <laughs> there's but... gonna be a, oh the global sounds a second too late he's just gonna try to get a kill out of it will not gonna be successful well does that give the permanent agility no uh, the permanent uh, intelligence um since he got the kill but it doesn't and silver pike has to run away it's gonna be fine. So yeah, uh, y you were mentioning you you were a Wind yeah. Ranger fan, gay. I think uh, I think Pattern doesn't really know when to press his skills on this hero. There was like um, in that last fight when he died, if he pressed his shackle right as the blood Jack's ray came out, the silence would have taken in a lot of damage. Here again. He is quite tanky now with the Boots of Travels and the drums, but he's taking a lot of damage. Can he survive it? No, he cannot. Uh, and Clankers? if he pressed the E, he would have dodged the E.T. stomp. Oh. Damn. They lose every hero here. Colonel Squid Guard is going to get the Carapace done. Yeah, and they're just... They're just walking them around in circles Colonel Squid gonna fall as well now the TP coming in from Silver Pike Ultra Gunner actually here he's like yo team we're taking the tower right there's no enemy heroes we don't know enemy heroes we killed the tower that is that is space for Fume to farm he's getting close to his um, battle fury I didn't know that that was a voice line in the Battle Pass, Mommy, I got me immortality. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, OG was spamming that line in one of the... <laughs> one of the TIs. Yeah. 
Clankers, Clankers is... Clankers gonna get caught out. Yeah, Way he's gonna get caught range. out by two heroes. Has the blood right. Um, and is dealing a quite a bit of damage back to to Bulljax. Can he get away? He cannot. And now Garda also be caught out by Jax attack. Let's not forget infinite scaling with permanent agility stolen. They're gonna go on to this Nyx assassin. Do they have the damage? Jax attack, you need to hit him. They have the damage. That's plus two or minus two depending on how you view your life. They're gonna take the courier as well. Now Sven looking to participate in this fight gets a stun out onto the silencer. But nothing more to follow. Signs of well, life for the Dire. Yeah, it's good that they're making some aggressive movements. And meanwhile, while this is happening, Bat Rider pushed out the entire bot lane. Mm -hmm. So their lane control is pretty good. Um, yeah, it seems like Squid is playing this game in the side lanes for the most part. At least for now. He seems like um, until he gets this BKB, which he's decided to rush, he is not going to participate that much. So it seems like they're just going to push out the side lanes and try to stall for a bit. Mm -hmm. And once they get their first few items, they're going to try to fight. Silence are going for an Agnum Scepter. Uh, uh oh, Kermit. Isn't this garbage? Am I... This is the AoE last words, right? Yeah. I I don't know. Is it garbage? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> we'll find out. I've never actually seen it. I just imagine that in order for last word to do anything as a skill, you need to have so much int. So mm -hmm. if you get an Ags, how are you going to get the int in the first place in order for last word to do damage? I think Ags is something you go later and not rush. But uh, we'll see if Jax is able to prove me wrong because... I've definitely never tried it before, so I'm curious to see how it works. You never played the offlane silencer drums into Aghanim Scepter? I'm shocked. I have not. Oh, they find Colonel Squid down bottom, and with the rupture used, that will be a bad rider going down. Bad rider into Nyx is so sad. You have, like, this flame trail that goes on for 20 miles. <laughs> yeah. And he just, like, steps in it, yeah. presses Spike Carapace, and you're like, fuck me. I did that to myself. Uh, they're trying to go on to the clock. Okay, Ultra Gunner is here. Nah, no, Ultra Gunner is just wanting to hit creeps. Wanting to hit the Crepes. anti Mage has overtaken the Svanen farm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I completely forgot to switch to Netwrath. Yoopsie! Um, and that chat just says, Silencer is great hero. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see in this game. Jack Stack, he has... All that intelligence stolen to know, he needs to TP out. Uh, and I mean, Fume is, like like you mentioned, he's overtaken the Sven. Um, looking for the Yasha now with the Battle Fury complete. Oh, Garda sees Colonel Squid. Again on the it's bat. just gonna stun him again. There's gonna be a rupture again. And Colonel Squid, he says, ah, oh, the definition of insanity. Yeah. Doing the do same do? thing over and over again, expecting a different result. His game plan of pushing out these side lanes until he gets a BKB is just countered by Nyx as a hero. Mm -hmm. So he just has to predict which lane the Nyx is in and go to the other lane, but that's such a hard thing to do. So it's so easy for Nyx to follow you, even if you go to the other lane. Yeah, and he even has that Invis spell, his Vendetta, to hunt But at the same time, the, the movements that he's making... Um, is causing the enemy team to like play in this area of the map, right? Mm -hmm. And if they're here, they're obviously not here, so Anti-Mage is enjoying his life. Yeah. I think if Squid continues to make these plays where he dies for the the greater good of his team, it's actually it's beneficial for his team in the long run. Mm -hmm. Maybe he his own hero gets griefed, but he is enabling his heroes um, when he does this. He does have actually the Philosopher's Stone as well to just try to get any amount of farm um, so that he can get to that BKB. And I feel like with that BKB, oh, they might actually go on to Sven here. Do they see Who has Philosopher's Stone? Um, if, if he gets that BKB, oh, he doesn't have the Philosopher's Stone anymore. No, no. He, now, he now has the Nether Shell. Okay. He had the Philosopher's Stone for a little bit. 
Alter Gunner is between multiple heroes here, but oh, they're just gonna TP. Oh, no, he barely gets out on the Bat Rider. Yeah. Next to Oracle. Clock's quick by, looking pretty epic. Oh, what does he have? Oh, <laughs> five wards. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's getting wrapped around. Oh, Silencer, he's just gonna walk away. That's gonna be a rupture. Oh, Garda, you don't need the hit. <laughs> Let's oh, go for it. There it <sighs> they are gonna get the kill onto the Silencer, but Clankers is now under the tier three, taking the tower shots. Ultra Gunner has, of course, Carabus the God's strength. is the Earth Splitter, and ET just dies. Oh, oh, yeah. MKB finished on the win now. And with that, they're looking for this tier 2. This time, most likely gonna get it and be able to take the outpost. Um, yeah, yeah, Bloodseeker has uh, TP mid to defend from the AM. And Batrider has cut bot wave. So at least the lanes are being pushed in from Dire. I think they're playing this game um, better than the last game, at least in that regard. That they're actually able to do stuff um, regardless of how much pressure is being put on them from the Radiant team. And it's up. Yep. I, I think they still have a fighting chance. I don't think this game is... Uh, mm -hmm. If we like, if we actually up. take a look at win probability, Gaben actually gives a 45% win chance for Dire, um, despite the 2000 net worth lead for the yeah. Radiant. It's the AM factor. He has the potential yeah. to honestly carry this game mm -hmm. solo. And the Wait, it's gonna get caught out by the Nyx again. Oh, oh no. no. I, I don't even want to show it anymore. Oh no. Oh no. Bulljax is coming in here. He says, I'll die with you, buddy. We can die together. Some oh, Rolian nice Julius. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, actually, he says, point. never mind. I don't want to die anymore. Oh, the clumsy oh, net. Oh my god. The clumsy net from the Bloodseeker. That was a very nice he TP has a otherwise. Staff. This is epic. Rupture four stuff. Oh yeah, just a uh, stuff. Ultra Gunner has the SNY complete. Looking for the Agnims now, of course. And same as the Silencer, um, who's looking for an Agnim Scepter. He's actually 1,000 gold away from the Ags. You know, if I were this Bloodseeker, with all this farm, I would have just gone Dagon 5, like, unironically. <laughs> <laughs> Just run it down. But he's making the uh, smarter team play that is less fun. <laughs> he's gonna go for a Lotus Orb even. And now Radiant, they're taking the Roshan here. And uh, with that, that's gonna be Aegis in the hands of the Sven. Rogue Knight claims another Roshan kill. I think like this, this, like the... Dyer played it well, but this now, these next 10, 15 minutes are like the danger zone for, oh, where did that Jackal shot go? That Jackal shot did not connect onto the AM and was not reflected. I wasn't watching. That was weird. Um, anyways, I think it was like a, a creep and it was just not the right angle to latch onto the AM. Uh, or something like that. So radiant. Link on wind. Oh. Yeah. Oh Dyer pattern. Smoke up yeah. with the BKB squid. Oh, they have to. If BKB radiant was now. watching their mid wave, they would have known that it got creep locked. So. Yeah. I don't know where radiant's going with the smoke. They are gonna take back their outpost. Ultra Gunner is just jumping onto Silver Pike here at the tier 3 and says Elder Titan, more like El Elder Deadly. <laughs> Very bad joke by, by the Sven, not me. Uh, and uh, they are taking this tier 2 and Silencer is also there. Bulljack's now jumping in here but uh, realizes there's nothing he can do for his Silencer. And they're, they're just kind of bleeding these kills. Yeah, I mean, this looks like another disconnected game from... The... I, I am just making the right play, so it's not on him this time. But Batrider, I don't know why... Squid has decided to, like, farm. Or, like, split push at least instead of take that fight. Mm -hmm. He just got his BKB, and I felt like that's when they wanted to make that play. Uh-oh, Fume. Uh-oh, Fume. Okay, goes into the trees. Into the trees. Should be fine, unless... 
pattern is a god here. And we'll see if is there gonna be a pattern of pattern being a god. Okay, no. Disappointed pattern. Disappointed. And now an Oh, Garda, he is here with the Invis Visiblink dagger. Immediately dispels the oh, smoke on the Bad Rider. They're gonna find the Bloodseeker. They're gonna go Very for. Epic. They're gonna go for the last. But there's of course the False Promise. Now the Global Silence coming out. They're going on to the Oracle. They're gonna find that kill. That is permanent agility, uh, intelligence for the Silence, oh. not agility. They're gonna get one kill. Garda is gonna be found here. He has been <laughs> dusted up, and he's gonna fall. They get the support kills. Is that gonna be enough though? Fume has a basher, so like like the longer this goes, the better it looks for Dyer as long as they don't lose a lane of racks. Or a buyback on the AM or something like that. Hmm. Sven commits the god strand, he's just gonna run at people with no catch. He has the storm hammer. Oh, he's fogged. Oh, pattern finds Bulljax. And Bulljax is most likely gonna fall. Jax no, attack. Night time. Jax attack. Can he get out? Yeah, he's actually just running at him. <laughs> yeah, he gets. Oh, he gets him. And uh, pattern stealing the kill there with. Oh man, that's, that's like Wind Ranger players just always stealing your kills there. God damn, Wind Ranger players. Don't don't you wow. disapprove, Fusquash? No. God damn. Goddamn Wind Ranger players. <laughs> How can you not? Wait, you see that juicy kill from 3000 range away? Your carry thinks there's no way anyone on my team gets this kill besides me. Yeah. Yoink. <laughs> you, you need to see that little animation with the Arcana that turns him into a flower. So just like, I just want to see it for the cosmetics, okay? Um, but in truth, it's all just about the gold. Arda is on the AM. Uh, gets a stun, gets another stun. And now Pattern is here, does not get the Shackle. Okay, what happened to the Shackle? Oh, I think he Manta dodged the Shackle, actually. Oh, that's that's a big, that's a big, big I, okay, play. Well, I mean, one thing that Garda did there is he didn't uh, chain his spells right. Instead of opening with the Impale into Meme Hammer, you should Carapace the Ancients. And that way oh. you reflect the Battle Fury Cleave, mm -hmm. and then you can chain it. They are going to find the two supports here, and these two supports are just dead. They are going to be a global silence, and now they're going on to the Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin is dead. Sven, however, still here, still standing strong. He doesn't have God Strength, however, and without God Strength, Ooh. Ultra Gunner, he is getting very low. The he Aegis just has run out, and Ultra Gunner, he is going to fight back with the regen from his from the Aegis, from the False Promise. He's, He's actually A-OK. -okay. <laughs> He's trying to fight. Fume, can he kill Ultra Gunner? Ultra so Gunner is in. dead. And Jax Holy attacks shit. 75 intelligence stolen. Plus 18. Okay, I don't know if you saw there. Um, when he committed the global silence on the silencer, Sven storm hammered at the exact same time, and he like dodged it because he was mid storm hammer. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I mean the false promise. Like, it was kind of lucky at the same time that their ages ran out. Uh, because yeah, it gave, gave all that region. region. <laughs> that wasn't cancelled because he wasn't taking damage. But yeah. still, Sven still died. And that that is very big kills. Like, Jack's attack, he's massive now. Yeah, if they don't get on this silencer, the same thing is going to happen every fight. But mm -hmm. and it's Sven's job, I think, for the most part, just to Stormhammer. What the heck? I have waited so long. Bat just blanked out. Oh. Rip. Just playing a game of cat and mouse. ET's going ags. Four ET with ags. This will be epic. I mean, he, I mean... Oh, Ooh, they find the caught. Wind Ranger with the blast, so... And she's dead. Now AM has an Abyssal Blade finished. And Dire dead. There's nothing that can stop this team. Well, a TP can stop him. TP out from the Oracle there. And Fume, I mean, Fume is massive. Together with, like, 
if if Raiden commits too many resources onto the supports of Dire and leave this silencer as well as um the AM unchecked. Next like, cut out top. Yeah, they they are doing a great job on the dire side with that. Well, I mean AM is definitely online. Mm -hmm. And he has the ability to kill any hero on Radiant of his choosing, I think. Bulljack's found clankers here, and now AM is gonna join the fray. There's gonna be a Lotus Orb. And that's not gonna be enough. They're gonna get the kill onto clankers. And with that now, I feel like for the first time in this game, it is Nebula with with the um, net worth lead. Silencer now going for a BKB. Bad Rider going, has the Blink Dagger going for a 4 staff. And Fume close on level 25. Which talent would you go this game? The Mana Void? Uh, Magic Rest isn't that good. Since most is physical damage, I think that he's thinking, taking. Yeah. Um, but also, Mana Void CD. There aren't that many targets, but I guess it's fine since... Uh, like, it probably allows you to be way more aggressive than if you don't go it, so... I would go left talent, but I don't think it's, like, objectively better or anything. So he may choose right. Yeah, he does go right talent. Okay. Uh, now, Jack stack 100 gold away from the BKB. Let's take a look at neutral items. For the Radiant, we have a Quickening Charm, an Orb of Destruction. And an enchanted quiver. So that first hit out of Vendetta from the Nyx Assassin is going to hit quite hard. Yeah, it's a giga hit. For the dire side, it's also an orb of destruction, a titan sliver, spider legs. Spider legs actually so good for the bat rider. Yeah. For sure. All of that movement speed. Windranger's decision to go for this like blink and phase boots instead of just um, brown boots, MKB, BKB is hurting her a lot right now. She's unable to dispel the global silence, so whenever that comes out, she's just screwed, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the blink wasn't a bad idea. It's just like the the way I see Wind Ranger is you get to select a hero on the enemy team and remove them from the game, right? And you need to itemize whatever you need in order to allow that to happen. And I don't, oh, I don't think they blink found Garda here, but Sven he jumps in. There's gonna be the global silence, but Fume he's oh. just dead. Ultra Gunners, have some mercy! They are having the lasso, but there's a 4 staff and Colonel Squid cannot run away. There's gonna be a buyback from the anti mage He's gonna be shackled though! He's gonna fall! Um, it is straight up lost. <laughs> the game is over. Ultra Gunner, have mercy! Huh. Okay, well... I mean, that, that's what I had originally imagined the AM-Sven matchup would be. It's just Sven deletes the AM. Man, Ultra Gunner just, like, walk, like flew up to the Anti-Mage and said, how about I delete you from the game? Anti-Mage got deleted. Anti-Mage had some coding, did put himself back into the game, and Ultra Gunner says, how about I delete you again? And with that... Uh, this is just a 2-0 now, like Nebula, you have a clockwork, but you have nobody else for 10 more seconds. Yeah. That's, that's an ET. And they, they actually can't do anything here. And there's going to be a hook shot in, Bulljack's just trying to distract them. But Ultra Gunner, he's just going to... They've lost the clockwork, actually. And uh, there's going to be a rupture, there's going to be a force staff. And... E.T. is also going to fall. There's going to be a lasso onto this vent, but the false promise <laughs> is there. And <laughs> GG. The counter pick. Oh. And it looked good for one fight. 75 intelligence stolen by the silencer. It looked good for that one fight. But in the end, Albert and the puppets with the Sven, it just was... It just was too strong. Yeah. Um, um. Huh. That was that was pretty interesting. The game just like ended. <laughs> After yeah. It looked to be like pretty even. 
Hey, look, at look at the graph. Look at the graph. It's just 505 and then two deaths in a row. Yeah. yeah. GG. The win probability. Oh, <laughs> Dyer has a chance. Actually, whoop, it goes the other way. It's just a straight <laughs> line up. Oh. And uh, with that, Albert and the puppets take the victory 2 to 0. I think what? if Dyer, if Nebula, um, like, want to have an easier time, they just need to work on their drafts. They're, like, going into the games with a disadvantage from the beginning, I think, just based off the fact that they're, like, picking heroes that don't deal with the enemy heroes, and they're also, like, countering themselves in some way. Mm -hmm. Like, the bat into Oracle just doesn't make sense to me. And yeah. They once again just didn't pick an answer to the Oracle Sven or whatever. It's like, um, yeah, I don't know. It, they're, they kind of just rely on Fume to carry both games with the AM and the Life Zero. It's like 100% on him to do everything. And that's not something you can ask of a player. Yes, certainly. Um, but uh, that's it for today. Thank you, Fuskash, for casting with me. At, as always, a pleasure. Hope you had fun. For sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hit that follow button. If you wish to support this channel, you can hit that subscribe button and get my dope-ass emotes. Um, and, yeah. Keep enjoying the dotes. Have a great evening. Goodbye. See ya.